Welcome back to the Lady's Choice. Things seem to be wrapping up here, as Lawrence has finally proposed marriage to me! <laughs> and Mr. Montfort, I think he's come to confess that he is the one who shot Arabella. He runs his hand through his hair, a nervous action that is most unexpected from the man. Yeah, running his hand through his hair? That will knock off his top hat. Ugh. He clears his throat and straightens his hunched shoulders. I came to pay my well wishes to Lady Ashbourne. Always so respectful, even to those you barely know. You're a good man, Pierce. The man quickly shifts away at the comment, gripping his gloves in his hands so tight his knuckles whiten. I frown at his odd motion, but brush away the thoughts. I shall go check if she's ready for visitors. He nods his head, and I give a small curtsy before heading into the drawing room to check on Arabella and Ernest. The gathering which follows between us all is a cheerful one. Well, except Mr. Montfort, who, after barely making eye contact with Arabella and greeting her, stands to one side as an unusually quiet. He is unusually quiet. After a few happy hours have passed, we all head to the dining room, everybody deciding to stay for dinner. I remain in the drawing room for a moment, gathering myself, only to find someone else remaining behind as well. Oh, Mr. Montfort, can I help you? He opens his mouth to speak, but instead closes it again and begins pacing. Are you well? Is there something? He stops suddenly and faces me, though keeps his gaze turned away. There's something I must confess, Miss Bennet, and it is something I'm not at all proud of. I'm unsure I am the best person to hear confessions, Mr. Montfort. My attempt at lightening his mood falls flat, unsurprising seeing as he did not value my company in the first place. Instead, I give him a nod to continue, if you must. Though, from what I witnessed upon my entry, I believe my friend has already made the declaration I hope my abhorrent actions would prevent. I stiffen in my seat. I don't know what you could mean. I do not care for you at all, Miss Bennet. It cannot come as much of a shock. Not a shock, Mr. Montfort, but I will not sit here just to be humiliated by you. Please, that is not my intent here. I stare at him for a long moment before giving another nod for him to continue. When arriving in town, I thought to find Lawrence alone. My plans were for us to enjoy our last season as free men, his father having already arranged a suitable match for him on his arrival home. And then I met you. From the moment of meeting, I could see Lawrence's attraction to you. I'd hoped it would fade, but the longer you stayed, the less likely that was going to happen. My main concern was the unsuitability of such a partnership. Lawrence is stubborn and headstrong enough without a wife who would encourage such with her own actions. I quickly stand from my place, unsure how else to quieten, to quieten his insults without being rude. But it does not work, and he continues. You must understand, Miss Bennet, he's like a brother to me. I only wish to see his happiness continue. I thought maybe he was merely engaging in a trivial flirtation before settling down. I cannot help but purse my lips further at the comment, unappreciative of being considered as a mere flirtation by anyone. I thought he would let the relationship fade as the end of the season approached, but the opposite was happening, and he was quickly falling in love with you. He begins pacing again, and I fall back onto the seat, his blunt statements like a weight settling on my shoulders. I knew then it would take something grand to make him see the truth of your unsuitability, and after Lawrence told me of his escapades as a swindler and his time with you in those moments, I know many women cannot help but fall for characters such as the society swindler. Wow, I did not know Mr. Montford was aware that Lawrence is a swindler. My plan was simply to show Lawrence that any man who dressed in such a guise could steal your heart. I realize now what a foolish idea it was. I also did not count on you being so in love with him. And then... The gun. I did not think it would fire. The revealed information takes a while to settle in my mind to realize just what it is he is saying. I almost stumble back when the pieces slot together in my mind. You're the fraud! You shot Arabella! It all suddenly makes sense. His concern for her well-being, his reluctance to look at her, his quietness and unusual behavior. Paris, it can't be! We both turn to fight Lawrence, lingering by the doorway. Lawrence! How much did you hear? All of it! Wow. And I could have coped with all but that last part. You truly are a fool. I know. I did not mean for it to happen. You must believe me. I... I... Hmm... Should I slap him? That seems like it would be awesome. Slap! 
Yeah, take that! You almost killed my best friend! Mr. Monfort places his fingers over his cheek where my hand had connected. It seems to cause more emotional than physical pain. He says nothing in response and understanding in his eyes, which claims a little of my fury, which calms a little of my fury. Silence falls heavily on the room. None of us are sure how to break it. What would you have of me now? Lawrence glances at me for a brief moment before stepping closer towards his friend and clasping his arm. This is all my fault, Pierce. If I had not been so naive as to start this ridiculous charade in the first place, none of this would have happened. We should both be the ones to bear responsibility for what's happened. What are you saying? We will turn ourselves in. But Lawrence, your father! I shall have to deal with it. Lawrence shifts his gaze to me and I hold it for the longest moment. I shall wait for you in the foyer. Mr. Montfort bows at me deeply before swallowing hard and leaving the room. As soon as he's gone, Lawrence strides towards me and takes my hands. You cannot do this. It was not your fault. No, not for Pierce's actions, maybe, but for giving him the opportunity. For that I am most guilty and I should pay for it. I look away, emotion building in my chest and making my breath stutter. He places his fingers beneath my chin and raises my head to look at him once more. Don't be worried for us. We will be together. I shall make sure of it. His words do little to help the building sadness that tugs at my heart. When will you do it? Tomorrow. Better get these things done before I decide against the sensible. He continues to smile, obviously hoping to stem my upset, but I cannot laugh in response. I would. He shifts uneasily on the spot, clasping my hands a little tighter. Will you meet me there? At the magistrate's office? When I'm in your presence, I feel as though I can do anything. And I will definitely need that feeling to get through this. Of course. He takes a step back, our hands slipping from each other's, my mind trying to etch the memory of his touch even to his fingertips. Then I should be taking my leave. I hope you'll explain everything to Lady Ashbourne and the Colonel. Poor Ernst, I believe your friendship with him was becoming quite dear to him. A sentiment I share. He will unlikely wish to keep such a relationship once this is revealed. I give a slow nod, already wondering how best to break the news. Until tomorrow then, Catherine. He gives a final lingering smile, our gaze is caught for a moment longer. He then quickly leaves. I drop onto the seat behind me as soon as I'm alone, clasping a hand to my chest as a pain strikes through it. Ah, the uncertainty of what is to come sends a shudder down my spine, and I try to breathe through the worry. What comes next will be the hardest thing of all. I stand from my place with unsteady legs and move back into the dining room, ready to explain everything to my friends. Ernest takes the news as well as expected, rising from his seat at the table and pacing the length of the room, a heavy frown set on his face. Arabella! Arabella already knew the truth about Amsbury. She's uh, only kind of shocked about the Montfort angle. She's much more forgiving towards the man than I am about at all. Ernest says little the rest of the night, leaving in a hurry and barely remembering to give his goodbyes. I retire to bed early, nerves about the next day already nodding in my stomach. I sleep little. My dreams and thoughts filled with worry and the thought of no longer having Lawrence in my life. As much as I understand why he wishes to turn himself in, my heart pains at the idea of no longer seeing him. He has brought such excitement and love to my life. To have it gone, I fear, would leave me lessened. The next morning, there's a gentle knock at my door as I'm dressing. 